This video is about carbenes, and what I really want you to know is that carbenes are weird. They are odd. They have both a pair of electrons on them, and they lack electrons at the same time. They have a pair of electrons contained within an sp2 orbital, at least the way I'm drawing this one, and they also have an empty p orbital that lacks for electron density. So that's weird, and we've already talked about how they react, but basically the double bond is going to attack the empty orbital, and that's going to push too much electron density onto this carbon, but at the same time that this is happening, the double bond is losing electron density at this carbon, which means it's starting to form a plus. And so the pair of electrons that's in the carbene can go ahead and add at the same time. And the result, again, as I've showed you, is the formation of a cyclopropane ring, and the R groups on the cyclopropane ring are going to be whatever the R groups were on the carbene to begin with. So how do we make carbenes? Well, there's lots of different ways. Diazomethane is one of them, and what you have have is this weird looking structure with a carbon, two hydrogens, and two nitrogens. If you draw out the Lewis structure for it, the Lewis structure that makes the most sense is one where the carbon doesn't uh, lack for an octet and doesn't have any extra electrons on it. It's simply happy. But if you draw that Lewis structure, that puts a plus on this nitrogen and a minus on that nitrogen. So obviously there's going to be a resonance structure associated with this. And if you simply push electrons this way, the nitrogen then can and push electrons to make a triple bond so that you have what looks a lot like nitrogen gas in the middle here, and that pushes electron density onto the carbon. Nitrogen gas, of course, is a triple bond between two nitrogens, a pair of electrons on each nitrogen. So you may recognize already that that's really what you have here, and if this nitrogen simply left, it would become nitrogen gas. And of course, this is an incredibly stable compound. It makes up most of our atmosphere, so this is something that totally happens pretty easily. In fact, if you make a diazo compound and you simply warm it up, this will happen on its own. And when that happens, what's left behind is a carbene. You simply have two hydrogens on the carbon and there's a pair of electrons left, left over. So the result, as far as the carbon is concerned, is to make a carbene. There's a pair of electrons that are contained within an orbital that's ready to go, and there's an empty orbital, a spot left over on this carbon. So that's what happens just because nitrogen gas is so stable. And that's kind of the simple one to figure out. The somewhat trickier ones are ones like here, where you have a bromoform molecule. This carbon has three different bromides on it, which means that its pKa is rather lower than you'd expect. And as it turns out, it becomes low enough that even this relatively mild base, pKa of minus 16, minus 20 or thereabouts, can come by and deprotonate. And really what's happening here is what you might consider to be an alpha elimination type process. So first you deprotonate, that will lead to, in the interim anyway, a minus charge on the carbon, which is tolerated largely because you have all these bromides nearby, and really tolerated mostly because what happens next is one of these bromides simply leaves. So when that bromine leaves, what you're left with then is a carbon with a pair of electrons on it and two bromides. This then is the carbene that reacts further. If two of these carbenes came close to each other, you might imagine that they would react and form a new species. And that's always a risk when Whenever you have carbenes. As long as your carbenes are relatively dilute, then they're probably more likely to do the reaction that you want as opposed to using each other up and making double bonds. But that's always a concern. And then the last one is one where there's a black box sort of mechanism happening here. So I'm not going to show you the details of it, but if you take this iodo, diiodo reagent, and this is called the Simmons Smith reagent, two iodides, two hydrogens, and then you add to that zinc, zinc has a pair of electrons on it. And so what happens? And again, this is not the correct mechanism, but the zinc will insert itself between the carbon and iodide bonds. What that will eventually do is allow a pair of electrons to shift onto that carbon, but of course, iodide's a great leaving group. So when that happens, the iodine just plain leaves. And once again, what we form is going to be a carbene with hydrogens associated. In other words, the same thing that we made with the diazomethane. And this, of course, is going to float around looking like that. If it were to encounter another molecule of itself, it would totally react with that other molecule and of course generate ethylene gas. The lone pair from one would fill the empty orbital on the other and what you would end up making is just plain ethylene. So though this chemistry is fairly bizarre, it's actually fairly easy to understand. What drives this decomposition is the fact that you're making nitrogen gas, which is super stable. This is just simply an acid-base reaction followed by a leaving group leaving and what you're left with then is fairly reactive. And this is a little bit more complicated, but again, organometallic reagents cause this to happen and then eventually what happens 
happens is you have a carbene. Carbenes react with double bonds to form cyclopropanes, and the R groups are just along for the ride. So if there are two hydrogens, then you end up with two hydrogens there. If you have bromides, naturally you end up with bromides there.